72 hours, goddamn, I'm feeling late. Damn, I'm in the face my mind. Let's live in that cloud now, and this night is never on vacation. Sound of that mind's a rally. What is going on guys, Horcrux here, welcome back to the channel, I'll be bringing you my mag DK PvP build for what I've been using in Cyrodiil during the test. But before we get into that, I want to give a shout out to all my subscribers, the people who joined in during the streams, interacted with the chat, donos, you guys are much appreciated, I really appreciate the support. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So let's take a look at the character sheet. Uh, nothing too immaculate. Notice we have a super high maximum magical pool. Go and get on my back bar. We do have 51k on our maximum maximum magic on our back bar, which is going to make our awards insanely high. This is a max stat build, not running coag. If you've ever played a magic or sorcerer, which are absolutely dominating the meta right now, this class plays very, very similar to magic or sorcerers. So if you like mag sork, you're actually going to like this build very, very much. It's important to have a really high crit resist, as high as you can manage, because every build hits hard as fuck so there's no proc sets nothing like that so crit resistance is actually pretty invaluable this patch so let's get up to our spell damages now keep in mind that this is 2724 I know on the thumbnail it says 3k well you have to take into account your seething fury stacks which I'm casting here it actually does not show up on your tooltip so even though I have three Seething Fury stacks, the 270 or so spell damage isn't actually applied to the character sheet. It's a bug, it's being worked on. So yeah, technically you have around 1700 magic recovery, 3k spell damage, almost 50k magic magic on your front bar alone, super high critical resist, high spell crit, damn near infinite sustain, back bar, doesn't look too bad. This is a light armor build that may make some of you guys nervous but trust me it's really nothing to worry about whatsoever considering we're running dampened magica so for the race i'm running dark elf you would probably be better off running breton just to make yourself a little bit more tanky but nord even so you can run nord breton high elf that doesn't really matter mage buns is just for increased max magica because that's what this build's all about and then be with Sugar Skulls because it's the cheapest and it's just the best on DK. I'll try to keep this build short and sweet, guys. I'm going to go over the sets real quick. So we're running spinners. Keep in mind, we do have 20,000 spell penetration on this build. So it doesn't matter what you run into, you're going to do a hellacious damage. So we're running Nernhone. Increased weapon damage on the front bar. So we got spinners front bar. We have a one-piece willpower restoration staff defending back bar. One Piece Swarm Mothers. Ideally, instead of Groth Guards, you want Dami House for the extra stats, but it really doesn't matter. Running 5 1 1, and then the last set we're running is Crafty. On the jewelry. It's all golded out. Yeah, Ghost Spinners. OG set. All Magic Recovery. You kind of don't really don't need this much, to be honest. I, As you guys know, I really like to over sustain. So, Crafty. Two stat pieces. Willpower Spinners. There you go. Doesn't get much better as far as damage. You could run Amberplasm and such, but if you want a max stat build with the most damage you can get, I believe this is it. Correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments, please. So, first ability running is Ellie Drain. Fossilized best CC in the game. I will come back to Flames of Oblivion and Molten Whip. Yes, we're running Molten Whip. Burning Embers on the front bar. Ferocious Leap as our gap closer slash burst combo setup. Now, these two right here, I'm not using Whip as a spammable. You want to use Flames of Oblivion as your spammable to get your Seething Fury stacks maxed, which therein doubles the damage of your next Molten Whip. So fully buffed up. Let's see if this we can actually get this to 20k. I think it goes up to 20k. 
Yeah, so we have Remote Whip. This can be higher if you rearrange the CP, but you essentially have a 20k Molten Whip in addition to your Leap combo, in addition to Flames of Oblivion procking, and your dots ticking. It's a very devastating combo. I have some clips. I'm not sure if I want to put them at the beginning or just kind of at the end of this build on stream. Doing 360 whip combos, dunk combos is pretty funny. So if you guys want to be around for that, please subscribe. I, I stream randomly, so try to be around to catch that. So that's the front bar. Back bar running Engulfing Flames. Some would argue that you could run Engulfing Flames as a spammable. I miss this spell so often. Um, it's better off just for me to use Flames of Oblivion. It's about uh, two-thirds of the cost, plus it hits two enemies. Yeah, it doesn't apply a dot, but um, it's much more reliable and much cheaper to uh, to cast than Engulfing Flames. So back bar running Rapid Regeneration. Since this is a max stat build, you have insane healing potential on, on your back bar. So this is 21k. If I swap to a front bar, it would be a 22k hot over 5 seconds. That's hellacious, guys. Rapid regen really coming in clutch right now during the serial test. Dampen magic. Now, the only snafu to this build is if you're caught without a dampen shield up or you're caught not blocking, you're going to get absolutely leveled by a Don Donnie spin to win combo. It's very important just to know your class matchups, know when to block, know when the burst is coming so you can get this ward off. You don't have to keep this up at all times. You are tanky enough to casually survive, especially against sorcerers where it is a Sork heavy meta right now. I do run wings and rapid regeneration, so kind of my rule of thumb, if you're against Sorks or Magblades, you can survive their burst combo just fine with Dragonfire scale and rapid regen. The only time you really have to use Dampen is when you're against stamina classes. At that point, It'd be better off running Dampen than Rep Regen. And let me comment on Coag, hit you guys with some math. So Coag, a completely unbuffed, we'll say in Serial, this is 4,500 unbuffed, okay? Yes, it can crit, giving you like a 6,500 heal. You can also be debuffed, befouled, reducing the effectiveness of Coag. It costs about the same. And when you compare it to Dampen Magic in Serial, you have a 12k ward. And that's just a flat 12k. It's actually a little bit higher than 12k, but you have to look at it that way, guys. It costs about the same. Dampen will always give you a 12,000 mitigation shield, whereas Coag gives you 4,500, maybe a 6,500 crit heal on a good day. If you're super low, you might be able to get that to like 8,500 heal, but that's a chance I'm just not willing to take. Um, Dampen, in my opinion, is just insurmountably better. Then Coag, assuming you're running a max stat build, which we are. Volatile armor, and like I said, I have Golfing Flames on my back bar. Its preference, what you use as a spammable. If you like to use Golfing Flames as a spammable, good news for you. You actually have a little bit of extra room to play around with. You can run Engulfing on the front bar, and instead of Engulfing on the back bar, I would run the Sigic Order skill line, a race against time. Uh, would be or deep thoughts either one of these is a good alternative and then temporal guard in the back bar just for the passive mitigation when it comes to potions pretty much just using one potion and that's the alliance spell drought super cheap in serial uh, it gives you crit on both bars magic recovery spell damage everything you need or you can buy these from the guild store i wouldn't do that i would just go into serial and buy these with ap they do the exact same thing and much much cheaper in my opinion so that does it for the sets does it for the counter rotation I explained. I want to keep this short as possible. I'm going to quickly go through the CP. Keep in mind, you guys will have a little bit more than me, but here's essentially how I have it set up. Feel free to pause at any moment. There are some odd points out of place just because I'm not max CP on this account. Keep that in mind. So, there you go, fellas. Try to keep this short and sweet. Like I said, please, please sub to the channel if you want to help support. I have a Patreon. You guys are more than welcome to check out. Comes with a shit ton of perks, always from coaching sessions, shout outs, one on ones. Hell, dude, I might even deliver you a pizza. Hell, like once a week. I don't know. So take a look into that if you're interested. But the best way to really support the channel is just like and sub. Leave a comment if you actually like the video or don't, doesn't matter. And that's it. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in Cyrodiil. Deuces.